Hi everyone and welcome to this free webinar talking about health and fitness um, as well as flying. So basically this is aimed at people who work in the aviation industry. However, you can have some links in with this if you work on night shifts. So I did do this webinar previously for um, an organization called Resilient Pilots. So I've still got all the uh, slides and everything. So I just thought I'd just go over a few bits. And then at the end, I will then go over to some of my favorite snacks and stuff for like some protein goodies and things. But yes, so I'm just going to kind of go over things like from fitness to um, nutrition, basically, and finding the balance and the importance of rest and recovery. Now, I'm very aware that a lot of you who are returning from furlough at the moment are um, working quite extreme hours, shall we say. And there's a lot of people who've been flying for, you know, quite some time and even through the pandemic have been working pretty awful hours, I have to admit. Um, it's quite shocking to actually see some of these people's rosters um, and trying to help my clients in the best way possible. But when they are doing six days in a row of 3 a.m. starts, and doing that three times a month is not what they signed up for really At the end of the day it's i get it some airlines do it already but yeah anyway i won't put any further comments in it but let's do the best that we can in this situation i say so let's go over everything so today's discussion we're going to talk about keeping fit the benefits of exercising with your current lifestyle and how you can fit in a work out routine with a flying um like a full-time flying schedule then i'm gonna go over nutrition how your good nutrition impacts your work mood and energy and how to make healthier meal choices on the plane at home and down route um normally i have like a question a q a area but what i'll do is i'll put the page up anyway because in case you want to email me or contact me through instagram so let's get cracking so keeping fit, why is it so important? Let's state the obvious, really, but let's break it down when it comes to like just in terms of well-being. So firstly, I've actually put the most important thing first, which is rest. Regularly exercising does improve your sleep quality without doubt. It does. And this is also very, very useful when dealing with jet lag, both down route and when you're at home. So... For example, when I used to particularly um, fly to certain destinations where I would be up at weird hours, quite often I would do a session because I was wired because I knew within a fair few hours I'd be really tired. So say like I was West Coast, so I was America, sorry, I say West Coast, Westbound. So USA, Canada, all of those kind of areas, um, I would basically look at I'd more likely be up at what four or five in the morning so that's when I'd probably have like a light breakfast and then I'd go and get a workout in get it done whether it was an in-room one so doing a bit of hit or something like that or if I took some equipment away which I'll talk about in a bit and um, so if I took equipment away with me or I use the hotel gym down route or a lot of people kind of go to me okay I'm back in the UK now what about um, landing day and exercise and things like that, Haley? So my top thing, I would say, don't work out straight away when you land from a long haul flight, particularly. Your blood pressure will be higher, you're fatigued, you're dehydrated, and you probably haven't fueled your body as well as you would normally do on a day off or when you're just in the UK or whatever it is. So when you're out of sync, you're less likely to be fueled appropriately. So what I would strongly suggest, so for people who are, say, landing in the morning, first thing, go to bed, go to bed for like five, six hours, something like that. Have a good sleep, get up, have some decent food in you and go out, at least get a walk in or if it's a really rubbishy day, maybe even go to the gym and you could lift some weights because you've had a decent amount of sleep then. And then go home, have dinner, go to bed early. Okay. Really, really important. I do advise against cardio though on landing days. Reason being is I noticed it myself. And then I did a bit of reading on it. It was the fact that blood pressure is actually higher after a long flight. 
because your body's now adjusting. Now it's back down on the ground level. So it's doing loads of clever things in order for it to readjust again in terms of like your oxygen supply, nitrogen in your body, all that kind of stuff. And also it affects how much like red blood cells and stuff are in your bloodstream as it is. So it's quite, there's a lot of strain going on in your body. So doing a form of like intense cardio, I'd strongly advise against it because you'll actually notice you won't, you're less likely to do as well. That's just from personal experience and what I've read. You could though do some resistance training because you're not getting yourself out of breath or anything like that, but you're still stimulating and training those muscles. So you could do that. Now, if you're say like landing from a long haul flight, getting back like mid afternoon or whatever, you've been up all night, don't work out. Just have a decent dinner. When you get in, go to bed, stop procrastinating, stick on your washing, have something to eat, go to bed, get hydrated. And you can get up early the next day and get in your training if you can, whatever it is, finding a routine that works for you. So, for example, uh, when I was crew, I was also working in a cafe to earn extra money for my wedding. And I was learning to become a personal trainer. So it was a lot of intensity going on. So I had a lot to plan in and I was training for a photo shoot. So I needed to train five, six days a week. So what I used to do was the landing day if I landed say from LA I get in at like mid-afternoon I would go and have a decent dinner go to bed get up at like seven eight o'clock in the morning the next day go to the gym smash it out and go and do my second job or have a day off that to me because I prioritize my sleep help me combat fatigue the amount of people that say I'm really fatigued from flying I get it yes it is tiring but are you actually prioritizing your sleep? Guarantee a lot of you are not. A lot of people will sit, watch TV for hours, scroll Instagram, all of that, rather than prioritizing their rest. OK, so really think about how you can do that. But no matter what, keeping active at least three times per week is going to help you. It's going to help you sleep better. OK, so finding the time and as whatever it is, whatever job it is you have, particularly like for crew, you've already got your roster. Granted, yes, you do get like available days and standbys and stuff. So it's a bit more difficult, but you can plan. You're still going to get days off. You're still going to have times where you have all of the morning or you have all of the afternoon and evening. You've got to prioritize. OK, but put your rest first. Anyway, I've said a lot on that one already, haven't I? Longevity of life, taking care of like your cardiovascular health. Um, it's going to be, it's a big thing with exercise, okay? And also lifting weights and things is going to help you in terms of building lean tissue and supporting things like your bones, okay? So for women post-menopause, we don't have estrogen in our body anymore being produced. And so that's what helped us have strong bones. So how can we combat that by eating a good diet and lifting weights at least two or three times a week? It's going to really help. So exercise is really important because it's not just for our cardiovascular system and our muscles. It's also our immune system, you know, reduces our risk of degenerative illnesses and disease and injury. So we don't want to have things like um, arthritis, um, osteoporosis, all kinds of things. Again, women are at a higher risk of it. So keeping active, it's going to reduce that risk. And also working out is a massive energy boost. We all have those days where I'm just like, I can't be arse, don't want to do it. I'm lacking in energy. I just feel shit. Moving your body for like 20 minutes I can guarantee you'll feel a lot better for it. And you'll actually be very proud of yourself for doing it. So I really, 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 really do recommend it, especially on days off or day clear days down route, or even if you're on room confinement, do an online class. You can even do one of my crew fitness ones. They are on YouTube, but there are so many out there that you can do. So it is a huge energy boost. And that's the one thing. Sometimes when you've had like a draining day, maybe you've done a four sector day and you're tired, but going in, lifting some weights and then going to bed, you're more likely to feel pretty damn good from it. So I used to set myself the habit of, if I was, say, on like a Euro tour or I was doing loads of early there and backs where I was getting up at like three o'clock in the morning, I used to then you would normally finish and clear like mid afternoon. So then I, what I would do, it's about an hour and a half commute. It was for me. I used to go back, but I'd have my gym stuff in the car. I'd go and lift weights, go home, make dinner, go to bed, 
very boring, but it got me into a routine and I felt better for it. I felt in shape and it helped me combat things like water retention, feeling lethargic, all that kind of stuff. And it made me get my eight to 10 hours sleep every night because I was knackered then. And also working out, it's really good for your mental health. And it's been proven healthy body, healthy mind, taking care of yourself, moving makes you feel fantastic. We all have it, I remember as crew, and now obviously with all these trips with room confinement and stuff, there's a lot of people who are lonely and feeling crap. So doing something like this, bringing up your energy and feeling good, it's going to make your mental health dramatically improve. It has been proven to help um, alleviate or lessen symptoms of anxiety and depression. So have a think about that. So how do we fit it all in? You're like, Hayley, what, what is this? So I've already kind of talked about this already. And it is important that you find yourself a system. No matter what, doesn't matter what job you have in life, whether you're a parent, whether you're not, whether you have more than one job, we are all busy in our own ways. We all live busy lives, but we have to stop kind of blaming the world against us for not achieving things like just taking care of ourselves. You need to prioritize yourself and have those me times. It's very, very, very important. So granted, no flight schedule is the same for crew. I get it. But like I said before, prioritize your sleep. A rested body will perform a lot better in the gym. So if you're, like I said, think about how you're going to get your sleep in. Stop procrastinating and taking that sleep away from yourself. Put it there. Get some structure in your life. Exercising on clear days, whether this is down route or at home, or if you land back in the early hours of the morning, have a good long nap first. So yeah, like I already discussed. And yeah, that, granted, there will be days where you can't work out every day. I'm very much aware that I don't even work out every day, okay? And that's okay. So you can do mindful choices, such as your step count. When it's like a night flight and you're sat there doing this, falling asleep on a jump seat, I used to, thank God I was an, an FTC. So I could literally, which is, um, for those of you who don't know what FTC is, that's like a senior crew member on board, like second in charge. I would go and constantly walk around the aircraft. I would just keep moving, doing stuff. Yeah, you look a bit of a nutter, but I had to do walk arounds anyway. And I would do something that kept me on my feet, kept me going. And I drink lots of water. And it really helped. And then when I get back from that night flight, I slept bloody well <laughs> and my steps were good. So I was keeping my body moving and it stopped me getting bored and thinking about snacking on absolute crap on that plane. Um, so, yeah, I always say, like, avoid long periods of sitting. OK, yes, there are some flights that you don't get a chance to sit down. And I know that. But there are times when it's like a long haul where we are sat around. And I know for a fact that there are a fair few flights at the moment that are like freighter flights. So there are people who are not literally got no passengers. I've got one crew member right now on my team who is off to South Africa, both ways, no customers. So I said, just keep moving, keep moving, just keep moving, like keep yourself going. Yes, you're going to get tired. And when you can and have a break, go to sleep. And then just, you know, just occupy yourself. And I'm not saying like continually walk. You might want to read for a bit, then just have a little walk. So what I love, I've got an Apple Watch. And what I love about it, it encourages you to stand every hour that you're awake. So it does it for a 12 hour period. And I love that because it's telling me to keep myself active instead of then becoming sedentary for hours. OK, so just have a think about that as well. So the big one that everyone always asks about nutrition, energizing foods, how to keep you going, how to survive these long flights, their impacts, yada, 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 and how to combat it, like not going into what I was, we used to call the club kitchen. So going in, getting all those snackies. So eating well does have a huge impact on your mood, your work efficiency, um, as well as your energy and your hunger levels. So making good habits with your food choices on or off the plane is going to be highly beneficial no matter what. And so some particular sort of um, recommendations that I would strongly advise that you could put into your meals. So, so for example, like energizing foods, things that are just going to help boost your energy for a longer period of time is your potatoes, brown rice, spinach, 
parsnips, chickpeas, lentils, pulses, and beetroot. You might want to take a picture of this or a screenshot. It's up to you, so you've got this for you. These foods, if you notice, these energizing foods, they're actually high in fiber as well. It's going to help with digestion because digestion, without a doubt, massively gets affected from flying, okay? Everything expands in the air and then compresses. We get dehydrated, so it does then affect you. You're less likely to have a dump for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to put it but it happens and then we get lots of fluid build up we get you know really bloated gassy not worth it so eating these sort of fibrous foods is going to help you good sources of protein is also going to help you so lean cuts of meat dairy eggs tofu beans soya have a look into it there are so many Protein foods out there, uh, it's very much stating the obvious, but I will go through some of my favorite protein snacks shortly with you. Now, everyone has a different goal, so I thought I'd put it down here just in case. So if you're, say, like, wanted to maintain, like, how um, your body is, so you don't want to change, you don't want to change your weight, you don't want to change composition, you're happy as you are, you need to have about one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. For fat loss, you need 1.6 to 2.2 um grams of per kilo of body weight and for building muscle so you want to get the gains 1.2 to 1.7 okay that's just there if you want it so yeah and i also mentioned it kind of previously before fiber rich foods whole grains fruit and veggies you need to be having about i would more say towards the 30 grams a day okay when I, obviously with my online coaching, I do see a lot of people eating a very insufficient amount of fiber, unless they've actually got a medical reason from like operations and stuff, they can't have it. There's no excuse, okay? This is from all of the good stuff for you, shall we say, the good carbs. So this is from your, like I say, the, the whole grains, your fruit and veggies, so important. The more color on your plate, the better, okay? I'm not talking colors from Harry Bows and all that shit, much as they're nice. I'm talking about color in terms of making salads, roasted vegetables and stuff and sticking it with a really nice protein source. So quite often, um when i'll go through the foods that i took on the plane shortly i would take things like protein pasta meals that i could eat hot or cold on the flights out of london and sometimes there were certain routes that i could take my own food with me but it's all dependent where we go so eating like decent amount of fiber and um protein in your diet that's going to make you feel fuller for longer and less likely to have hunger pangs as it were when you are on the flight fun fact when you eat a decent amount of fiber it increases or it improves your gut hormones so that's basically is what helps you stop feeling hungry okay so having both of those you're less likely to snack okay now there's nothing wrong with having a cheeky chocolate bar or anything like that every now and again but if you realize that you're falling into an area where you're continually picking at crap and you're noticing that actually it's affecting things like not just from a weight perspective but it's affecting your energy and just your overall health it's time to reevaluate. I always say you should never cut anything out in terms of foods in your diet but it's about being realistic and being balanced in life so yeah like I said it's always been like for me like protein pasta meals salads sometimes i would take dishes away with me that i could stick in the oven so now you can get these tupperwares that are glass that can then be oven safe um so which is nice because then a lot of like newer aircraft you can put it on steam or you can go and use the first class ovens where they've got steam and it's going to come out and be absolutely delicious okay so have a think about that the other thing I want to talk about is state the obvious, drinking. What we do drink has a major impact on our, obviously our energy levels, our workouts and our productivity. Now, don't get me wrong, I love wine. I'm all into alcohol. I love a cheeky glass of wine, especially on a Friday for me. I'm like, cheers to that. But we don't need to have it every day. I did find that when I was, I was crew for seven years, and I did remember my first few years, I started to kind of, my health was declining in terms of every trip I did, I was just getting drunk. 
I was just drinking and I was like the original like 380 lot that would go and do all the many, many, many LAs. So we did drink a lot, but I noticed it was having a real impact on me. So I took it back and cut it back and started saying like, you know, I will have a few drinks on certain trips where it's for something special or it's with like really good friends of mine from BA that I love being with but I wouldn't go out for the sake of it or start drinking with people I didn't really know because I thought I'm never going to see him again and people go oh but it's about memories I'm like but is it really I just started to really sort of reevaluate that my memories of like meeting crew was going to see cool stuff and doing fun activities together rather than going out and getting shit-faced that's just my personal thought and I don't want to go into too deep on it but people who I have seen over the years that have fallen into that category where every time they went down route they get really drunk they're normally suffering with a form of mental health problems now like that there is a considerable amount of it now or they their health has majorly declined so just have a think about it and reevaluate is it worth it or would you rather have a few drinks with your real close ones and friends at home so have a think about it now there's nothing wrong with like every now and then like a glass of wine or whatever but as your doctor says it's not okay to be drinking really every day and how many units per week so just remember that okay it doesn't make it any difference because you're a flying career water two to three liters a day i personally advise at least if on your a long haul at least two liters on a flight people go but i'm gonna piss for england yeah granted you probably will but you'll be taking care of your internal health and your skin and your hair everything you'll be taking great care of yourself your kidneys will be filtering properly your body will thank you for that and your digestion will improve dramatically from that so yeah at least a liter for a sort of a middle mid mid flight two liters for a long haul on top of your daily dosage of two liters a day so yeah sometimes you might have to have four liters but man alive when you wake up in that hotel room the next day after that long flight you will feel 10 times better you won't feel so dehydrated headachey you will be more energized and that comes into also when flying don't get me wrong the amount of times i've had copious amounts of that skanky coffee it kind of helped having a bit of caffeine but Drinking a shit ton of water energized me more than anything else. Lots and lots and lots of water. And that brings me on to caffeine, obviously. So, yes, it is for useful for a short-lived stimulant. So, obviously, like a drive home after a night flight, yes, I'd need a strong coffee to keep me going because it could take at least an hour and a half for me to get home. Um, and there are some of you who drive way up north. And I think you're bloody nuts, you lot that do that, because I certainly wouldn't commute that far, but you guys do it. So anyway, they, they, they say that your maximum recommended daily dose is about 400 milligrams, which is approximately four cups of coffee a day. Any more than that could have some later, like so later on can have a bit more of an impact. So overconsumption has been proven to um, have an effect on anxiety, um, sleep deprivation, obviously, and also the increase in cortisol. And now cortisol is released, it's a stress hormone, and it is released from your body, say like when it's sleep deprived, for example. So cortisol is higher because it's your body's way of surviving and keep going, keep ticking along, you know, it's going to keep going. But it can actually, fun fact, have, um, it can cause water retention. So I looked it up because now I'm a mum and uh, a man alive sleep deprivation when you're a parent is horrific like that is on another scale of sleep deprivation I've never had anyway I don't want to go into it and every time that I would do my check-ins for me for me to lose when I was losing weight when I'd had a really bad night's sleep my weight didn't shift or it went up even though I was following everything correctly and that was down to the fact that cortisol had risen so high, my body was retaining a lot of water. So your body from like a night flight, it's got high enough cortisol as it is. It, so it's, it's dehydrated and you're basically desperately needing some sleep. So I would just reevaluate and try and 
swap some of the coffee for water if it was me. Just a strong advice. I'm not saying cut out coffee. I have at least two or three cups of coffee a day. Trust me on that. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, obviously now this is normally when I do a live webinar, I do it where I leave this time for you guys to kind of ask me any questions or whatever. But you see, I've just I've left thing, what points of contact you've got here in case you want to ask me any questions of anything we've talked about today. I will go over the foods and stuff in a second, but I need to go onto a different page for that. So um, what I was going to say was my email here, chastonhaley at gmail.com. You can go on my website, crewfitnessuk.com. That will take you straight to my email if you need to contact me. And then my two Instagram accounts, Mrs. Underscore Chatterton and at crewfitnessuk. So just going to stop sharing for a second so you see my face. And I'm just going to quickly get up my favorite protein goodies. Cool. Bear with me. Now I'm going to just share my screen again. Fab. Right. If I go onto this nice and big and we'll go over these foods. Cool. So this first thing here it is more expensive than your average protein. I will say that granted. However, what is amazing about this is you only need to add water. So boiling water and that is it. I believe there is a vegan option as well. And it tastes incredible. Honestly, is the tastiest porridge I've ever had. And I flipping hated having oats in my hotel rooms. It was the most depressing thing to do. But this, this was a this is a game changer. It tastes incredible. It's um, it's definitely a um Oh, what was it? 20 to 25 grams of protein per serving. So it's going to fill you up for longer. So say like you had that and then went and did a workout in a hotel gym afterwards, you are sorted for quite some time. It's great for that. The next thing is this true nut peanut butter. Don't know if you're like me, but I am obsessed with peanut butter. <laughs> this is a low calorie, high protein option. So all you need to do again is mix a little bit of water and you've made a um, paste, which is then like your peanut butter, which you can spread in something. You could put it in your porridge, whatever it is that you want to do with it. Um, quite often I make a satay sauce with it. So I could take chicken satay. You could then do chicken satay and like steamed vegetables or something like that. Take it on the plane, heat it up in the uh, oven, sorted. Lovely. My other two favorite is these two protein pastas. They look weird, granted, but they are very high in protein and very high in fiber. They're incredibly good for you and they are vegan. I forgot to also note that the true nut is also vegan. I often used to cook up meals with a protein source such as I don't know, like chicken, mince meat, all these meat-free meatballs, create a nice sauce with it, normally tomato-based one with loads of veggies. I've got an incredibly fibrous, high protein dinner that could be eaten on the plane at home, reheated, absolutely banging, highly recommend. And this spaghetti only takes four minutes to cook. It's amazing. And you can get that from Aldi. I also should have noted where the other foods are from. So True Nuts, I got that from Amazon. Protein Works is from The Protein Works, <laughs> the actual website. They always have sales on, only ever purchase from them when they have sales on. So yeah. Protein Works, Amazon, Aldi. Aldi has so many goodies. So going down to this, the no meat meatballs, this is also from Aldi. These are really good to make with your own sort of spicy tomato-based sauce, which they then put with that spaghetti. Absolute game changer. Again, it's a plant-based meal and it's high in protein and high in fiber. Really, really gorgeous. Then you've got your... Um, high protein yogurt so these are the knockoff skier ones and you've got the uh, arla protein one down here if you go for the arla protein one if you get the ones that are in the actual pots they're actually lactose free just so in case anyone's lactose intolerant these are great yogurts because they are about 20 grams of protein in them you could chuck in a load of fruit with them you could even do the strawberry flavor chuck in some strawberries um crunch up a um uh, what you call it meringue nest and you've made an eaten mess you could even then just drizzle on top 
um, diabetic strawberry jam. It's incredible. I highly, highly, highly recommend. Really great. Okay. I've put in a picture here of a bagel. Flipping love bagels, I do. But a wholemeal bagel actually got nine grams of protein in it and is very fibrous. Notice how I always say protein fiber because I want you to take care of your gut health. I'm very much in like focused on those two things with my coaching. So they're really, really good. Eat lean cheese. You can get that from most supermarkets now. Their spreadable cheese is delicious. It's better than Dairy Lee triangles. Tastes 10 times better. Um, you can get the hard cheese. I recommend just melting out on top of something like a spaghetti dish or something like that. It's not something that I would eat on my own. So that's the blue packets because it's quite hard cheese, but melted on top, it hits the spot. Really low in calories, very high in protein. Um, but I haven't tried the yellow color yet, but I have been told that the one that's like a Parmesan, uh, it's like Parmesan, apparently that's really good. Now for a treat every now and then, I love to go to the Protein Queen. She does the most insane goodies. She does these um, protein pizza pies and she also does um, the big cookies and fake cheesecakes, all this kind of stuff. And they're really high in protein. They're actually on my fitness pal, all of the, uh, the nutritional information and they taste incredible. She's not the cheapest, but every now and then there's a treat, especially say like you're, you've got a goal in mind. So if you're on a calorie deficit or you've got an event coming up or whatever, in terms of you need to stay focused, that she's a really good one to go to. Plus you can freeze her produce because they come in big portions, particularly like the pizza pie things. Um, and that thing, I think it's something like eight servings in it. So you could easily freeze it. A lot of my clients are buying this clear protein so in the summer, a lot of people were making them into ice lollies, and that was really nice. You can also then take the powder down route. So you've got that, and it's like a nice squash. You could even drink that on the flight. You just need the powder and just pour it in. So you could measure it out, put it into like little pots or something like that. And then you could pour it into your water, and you've got a nice dosage of protein. And also you're hydrating yourself as well. Then I don't have these often. Protein bars. Don't get me wrong, they're great, but be careful with them. Don't have them too often because they can, um, they are likely to cause constipation or digestional issues. But every now and then they're good. They're also quite high in calories, um, but they're quite a nice sort of protein snack to have every now and then. But like I say, don't have it every day. And they also, there's so many different companies now that do protein shakes. There's a new one that's come out recently that Asda is selling that has 50 grams of protein in it madness and it's lactose free so hopefully that helps you in some way my top tip i forgot to add when um talking about um uh what was it about protein is that you want to have between 20 to 50 grams of protein per meal no less and no more okay so just bear that in mind now the other thing i'm going to do now is I don't normally do this, but we're gonna. I'm gonna show you. Oh, if I can do this, probably not. Is I'm gonna show you if we go on the decathlon website. Okay. Agree and close. <laughs> right. Talk about equipment that you can take down route. So I like to take this, or I'll get crew to take this with them. A suspension trainer, okay? This is like a TRX. TRXs are normally up to 160 quid, sometimes more than that. You can get them, you can spend some serious money. This bad boy, it's only 14.99 and you can put it behind any doors, like for the bathroom, your hotel door. If you're on room confinement, this could be a really good thing. And yes, loads of things like TRX workouts and stuff online. It's an amazing way to develop on your strength. It's a wonderful way to work on your core strength, balance, you name it. It's an amazing piece of equip equipment to have. It's also really beneficial for home workouts. And it folds up into this tiny little pouch. So really, 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 really think about it. It will be a super useful thing you, for you to have in your hotel room or when you're at home if you're not wishing to join a gym. The other thing is, let me see if I can find it on here. Resistance band. Is it going to come up? 
It's going to probably not. Here we go. Yes, it is. These bad boys. These are brilliant. Again, don't weigh much. Take up very little room. You can get different ones of different intensity um, and sizes. This is the one I've got, which is a five kilogram one. And you can do all kinds of it with it. You can do things from like, if you tighten it up, you could then do things like deadlifts with it, squats. You could then do more like shoulder presses by standing on it. You can do lateral raises. You could tie it around a handle and do flies. There's a lot you can do with that. Taking resistance bands and that suspension trainer is going to be incredibly beneficial for you. So I really, really, really recommend it. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, I hope that's given you a few ideas um, to kind of take forward with you in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please, 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 please do not hesitate to contact me. Anyway, take it easy. Happy flying and stay safe. Bye bye.